What up, folks? How are y'all doing out there? Great. Us too. All yeah. right. Hey, if you don't know Kevin Steinberg, folks, you should. Kevin, how are you doing, man? I am fantastic. Thanks for asking. I like oh, it. I like it. I love it. Um, we're doing pretty phenomenal here with the new year 2022. What a great way to start it off. You're our first interview of the year, so thank you. <laughs> you know, gotta love it. Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me as a guest. Definitely. So you and I have something in common, which um, is kind of interesting that you and I have something in common. I think that's what drew me to you. Um, we both had strokes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, appar apparently I've had about three plus a couple episodes of Bell's Palsy and yeah, I'm yeah. still I'm still here. What what happened to you? When did, when was yours? Well, my first stroke was after I got my stint in for my first heart attack. Oh, no. so, yeah, I had it pretty much right afterwards. Um, my deficits were a little different. I was able to work through them. And then I had a second stroke. TIA, you know, you know, what yeah, that is. And, yeah. Um, I had that, yeah. a, what, two months ago, three months ago. Yeah, we were at a pumpkin patch. Yeah, we're at a pumpkin patch, and it's just like just not having it. And yeah, yeah. So oh, that was kind of interesting. I'm so sorry to hear that. But did you recover fully and pretty quickly? Well, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I, you know what? I think I'm doing it. Okay. Straighten him out a little bit. He was yeah. You so. mean crazier? But anyway, I'm doing okay. I'm able to work. I'm able to do a lot of stuff now. And um, yeah. you know, luckily, I got a great support system behind me, which I would assume you do as well. Yeah, yeah. My uh, first one was way back in, uh, boy, like, oh, January, February 2006. So it was around wow. this time of year. And, um, oh, my God, that's like uh, 15 years ago or more. Anyways, um, I was partying heavily on drugs. I was up for a couple of days and then I had a red eye flight and I went to bed. Uh, I fell asleep. I was feeling kind of sick, like nauseous, like I had um, food poisoning, mm -hmm. and, but I had so much drugs in my system. And then <laughs> when the plane landed and I stood up, I don't know. So they said maybe something, a clot traveled up from my legs or something yep. because suddenly I could think clearly but when it came out of my mouth to speak, it was gibberish. Yeah. And my, I think it was my left arm mm -hmm. was, uh, I had no control from, from the shoulder down. It oh, was wow. not connected to my body. It was dead. And uh, I, I, knew, I knew immediately what happened. But I tried, I still went home from the airport and I tried to tell myself this isn't happening. And I went in the shower and got ready for work. And then finally I gave in and yep. called a friend to take me to the hospital. I said, no ambulances. I'm not announcing this to anybody. Just take me to the hospital. Yeah. Sounds pretty close to familiar. Yeah. Yeah. The no ambulance part. I worked on an ambulance, 911 <laughs> ambulance for 15 years. So I was the same way. I was like, no ambulances. Just take me there. Right. And uh, the, the second one, I don't know, because last year during COVID, kind of like you, I had one. I was just sitting in my room and suddenly my my eye locked. It was so oh, freaking wow. weird. Uh, and it locked like like as if I was looking in that direction. So I was I was like hitting my head going, what? is going on but again like you know your body you know your your medical history you know what yeah. you've been through and i'm like i'm sitting here and i just had a stroke i didn't know if it was from the heat i didn't know it was because covid we're just sitting around so much and i, I was just snacking on junk food and stuff and um after 20 minutes my eye straight and i took pictures i know to take pictures and video yeah. when things are happening so the doctors were, were really thankful and it passed after 20 minutes but i sent a note to my gp and she said doesn't matter if it passed you go to the hospital yeah. so they kept me for about three days and they said yeah you had a you had a stroke and we see a couple other markers and i said a couple i thought i only had one they said no you got another marker because they can see the scar tissue, or whatever in in, yeah. in your brain, <laughs> and um, but every time I have a stroke, they cannot figure out why or how. They're like, 
we don't see any clots, you're healthy, you're young. Um, they were looking for a disease because they said, I'm Jewish, and they said Jewish people kind of carry some sort of gene or something for it. They couldn't mm -hmm. find that. Oh. They said something, maybe something's wrong with your blood. They could, they could never find anything. But the, the only thing that I have to go by, I take after my dad. I have my dad's DNA. He's no longer with us. But for the last 20 years of my dad's life, and he died when he was 80, but the last 20 years... He just kept having strokes, and wow. finally, that's what did him in. He had a big stroke. I think he was on the, his floor for 24 or 48 hours till they found him, wow. and then he he had he went into the hospital and he, he was done. He had a like a do not resuscitate, resuscitate yeah. uh, thing. So, but it's amazing the human body because. For 30 days, I went to go see him for a week up, up in Winnipeg. I'm from Canada originally. Wow. And I went to go be with him for a week. Uh, but he lasted like the body has like water, food, I don't know, fat, 30 days. And then, and yep. then he, he passed. So I'm, I'm, all, I'm always worried because I think my biggest fear in life is having an aneurysm or dying of a stroke. And but being locked in my body and nobody knows mm -hmm. that I'm here. Right. On exactly. the floor. That's my biggest fear. Yeah, I believe it. Like that. So um, tell me a little bit, you're an author, is, is this correct? That is Sorry? He's an author? Yes. No, I yes. write an author. Yes. Talk, yeah, no. Tell me a little bit about what you write about. Oh, uh, God, I love writing. I've always written. And um, lately, uh, I wrote a pilot for a series. I've always written. I started off writing cre just creative short stories uh, based okay. on my life. Uh, then I tried to write a screenplay. And then uh, finally, I did something that I, I never thought I would do is, is a TV series because they say you got to love the characters you're writing about because Absolutely. you figure you're going to spend three years with them so yeah. you, you better like them um and i watched this uh hbo show from 2007 called tell me that you love me and it sparked something in me it was about three heterosexual couples who are connected through their uh sex therapist and it was very european like it was showing mm -hmm. people who are big names now back then in in their relationships and sexual relationships and their problems and i thought i like i like dramedy i like relationships and but to me i'm i'm also gay so in this day and age i'm like there has to be a gay couple a straight couple and a lesbian couple who are all friends and who are all interconnected so this is a, a pilot that i wrote now i've been getting some great feedback during covid i've nice. i've had about maybe a dozen I think a dozen readings online and uh so i'm still developing it so so tell me about what that means like you're getting feedback where are you going the the, the feedback online i belong oh uh, for a few years now i've belonged to a, a few writing groups online yeah uh, or well in person and acting groups and we moved online during covid and so i'm with other you know professional actors writers whatever who are working on their own stuff um you know who have yeah. have had stuff made or whatever and right. um we give each other feedback that's cool bounce things off of each other and go from there in little forms totally what, yeah. I like that. what um what does it look like when you like do you go pitch that or how do you get that to try and get somebody to to i, st I still haven't it? yeah i still haven't uh, uh i'm not ready for that yet, uh, what you have to bring into the room when you go pitch, and I and, and and I will and I want to, is you know you you have, you don't want to show you want to tell them the idea and you have to be very clear on it and they give you a certain amount of time. You have to have your elevator pitch, which is like a one two lines, thirty seconds, fifteen seconds, as if you really met someone in the elevator and wanted yeah. to excite them about something you have to have it really condensed uh and then um sometimes not sometimes you always have to have uh, like about three to five ideas in your back pocket because they may like you and they may not like the idea or they may like it but they bought it from somebody else and it's already in development so they're, go they're gonna go what else you got and it's also about relationships because it may yeah. take three to five times to get through the door but 
if you keep going through the door, that means they like you and they want to hear what you're doing and what you're working on. Mm -hmm. And they they may hire you for someone else's show because whatever yours they like you but yours isn't ready or they may buy it from you and have more established writers work on it interesting that is cool i like that we've been talking about um a cartoon idea that's like shorts and stuff that we want to work on so yeah so you're, you're writing for for some other fat idea but our yeah is how do we take our idea and make it a cartoon yeah <clears throat> so it's funny and that you talk about that we're like kind of on the edge of our seats like what are you doing <laughs> yeah How can we that learn? we're always trying to learn when we do interviews and we hope that we can pass the same on to other folks right. as well yeah yeah good for you guys because oh my god we're we're in a golden age of animation i mean yeah. look at all the shows if it's the cartoon network or the comedy or or fox and i mean the simpsons and south park have been on for like 25 30 years and exactly. it's it's adult cartoons like anything yeah. goes now and yeah. even even online you can you can just do a web series you know oh, the yeah. funny thing is the concept that we're talking about it was like created in the 80s yeah and i've carried this for a long time we we got together and started talking about you know some of the things in our minds and ideas yeah. that we both hell held on to and this is where yeah. it came to from where we've been doing we're doing our show for over a year now yep. yeah and we said we want to add some things to it so how do you do that and i think mm. technology to be able to do stuff on your own, even in the animation yeah. world, has right. come a long way. Because The Simpsons yeah. started that way, right? Yeah, that was yeah. Tracy, Tracy Ullman, Ullman show for like little thirty-second shots or something like that. And we're like, we could start our little idea concept that way on yeah. our own channel. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a great thing that you're doing. And just look at us. I mean, we're <laughs> a couple of cartoon figures anyway. Yeah. We have the face for cartoons. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> That is awesome. I mean, as you know, animation takes time and it can get pricey, but there are ways that you can get very creative and do like stop motion. You can, you know, cut out How your figures from paper or you can do drawings and stuff. Go for it. Yeah. So, so when you said you had like five other ideas, you said you've been working on one a lot. So then you have to have all these other ideas. To, when you think of five other ideas, do they tie together to your original idea or do they have to be so no. far away? No, no. They're, I mean, they're coming from me. So they're going to be a certain type and style, right. you know, and have a certain voice. You um, said that they like you. That's why you're coming back in. So that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But that uh, just to go back, I remembered, but the original idea, though, if they do buy it, they want to make sure that it's going to last, uh, you know, a lot of episodes or season. Yeah. They also want you to come in with about six to 12 uh, uh, <clears throat> log, log lines, which is two okay. sentences for each show so that they know where the show is going and that they're going to, it, it can last. Okay. That's interesting. I, I get that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. They yeah. want you to and, have a full season basically before. <laughs> So start thoughts. with the okay. great question now that just she's he's sparking ding, ding, ding. ideas like <laughs> you start it's all these concepts we've interviewed so many musicians uh, so do yeah. you start with the end in mind or do you start with the beginning on mind and go oh yeah uh, totally the just like start the at start. the end and then work your way back or no some people may do that and i i love that um no i start in the beginning and i have an idea where it's going, but that changes as I'm writing and the characters start to take on a life of their own and the characters start leading me, which is when you know you've yeah. you're really uh, lo locked into something. That's cool. I never would have thought of that, to be quite honest. I, yeah. To me, I, if I think of something, I, I think of just everything and it comes out, blah, now. You know, you can yeah. ask him and our super producer who she's not on camera, but she's here, Erica, and they just laugh at me all the time because it just kind of comes out and they're like, okay, can you decipher that code for us, Chris? You know? <laughs> so, but that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. If, if you see the complete story, you know, over how many uh, episodes it needs to be, that's fantastic. If you see, that I almost thing. think like uh, like a Harry Potter and how she had to write, yeah, because she had to have the end in mind, right? <clears throat> yeah, her way back, right? You right, think right, so. right. <clears throat> that, right. That whole time, or did she go book by book, or and then how did she create? Wow, there had to be because she had things, elements that were towards the end that she had to start with with the beginning. So there's so many different ways and concepts. And that was why I asked yeah. you that. How do you yeah. work? 
Everyone has, you know, there's no right or wrong. Everyone just yeah. figures out what works for them. And, um, you know, aside outside of this, I mean, if you guys want to talk some more, I'm really happy to talk with you guys about yeah. it. This, uh, well, this sounds great. So you got into TV, but you were writing in different ways before. Have you always had the same characters that you've carried along? No, or no. Have oh, they God. Developed, has a character developed into yeah. something that pieces of a character? Here's here's my problem. <laughs> I have okay. so I have so many ideas. I get that. I really and, do. <laughs> and then um, my problem before, I, I'm I'm very I'm one of the few people I don't know who's like thankful for COVID because COVID gave me a reason to be home with nowhere to go and nothing in my way, and that I can actually finish something because that was my problem. Is mm -hmm. I would start I would start stuff, and then after ten. 15 25 pages i would like be on to the next idea and be on to the next idea and it's like just see one thing through mm. so finally i did it <laughs> so did you become more efficient because of that? i mean you said you have but the efficiency of yeah. yourself wasn't just like being alone to do it did you find different ways to like help yourself continue on because you didn't oh, have the distractions yeah. or did you still find distractions no well I mean, there's there's the fridge, and then there's the internet, and then there's FaceTime, and then there's the bed for the nap. So I mean, even right. if I'm writing for for four solid hours in the day, maybe it takes me eight or twelve hours. But. Right. <laughs> um, but it taught it, it taught me a couple of things. It, it taught me, I mean, it's certainly how to see something through and, and finish it and just stay. Because I I'm the opposite of the guy of the dog who's like squirrel squirrel i could put blinders on and i will not move i will not like eat i want to get it done you know and writing is is rewriting and um i lost my train of thought but uh it did teach, i have it that effect me. on people it's okay <laughs> <laughs> the the other thing that actually is really training me to see something through is sorry i keep pointing at you guys like it's okay. anyways um is podcasting i am learning so much because i, I come from acting and writing and pr whatever and but the podcasting i didn't realize how difficult it is and how much time it takes and i'm by myself and i don't have a producer and i don't have a promoter i don't have a scheduler so i'm doing from the pre to the post i oh, just yeah. posted episode 15 and, and made a promo and just re-edited the, the 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 mix the sound mix and I'm like, really, this is this I, I can take to my acting and writing because it's really teaching me the brass tacks, you know? Yeah. So I have a question that I love to ask musicians, athletes. Yeah. Anybody that's creative or, you know, anything out there, you know, and I use it for an athlete because I did a lot of coaching and oh. this is the way that I like to put it. Every athlete, their first step, they know what they're going to do. If it's a positive first step, then they know that that play is going to go good. If it's a negative first step, then they know eh, things aren't going to go quite as well. What would you say would be your first step as a writer? Uh, first step as a writer is having, having the spark of the idea, mm -hmm. and then I could have it for, I don't know, I wouldn't say a month because I have my ideas longer than that. Um, it could be half a year, a year. And it's it's that, is the right word, that kind of gestation period where it's in yeah. my head and it's like I'm sleeping on it and I'm at the gym and I'm working out. This is my favorite. I get so many ideas at the gym, you know, when my body is busy with something, then my mind can get busy with something else. And it's uh, tossing it around and playing scenes out and seeing things and stuff. And then I will start write, you know, writing it once I really have a, a really good idea. And my, my thing is, I don't, I'm not like you, like you say, you see the whole thing beginning to end and uh, however many episodes or whatever, I will see the whole episode. And I and that's when I'll start writing. Did I answer your question? Oh yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> you understand that question? There is no right or wrong answer. Yeah. 
dependent upon you on yeah. the way that you do things and it's a collective yeah. for everybody to learn from that's yeah like yeah I, I i really really have to see it they say you with anything like like going to the moon they yeah. say anything is possible but you have to come up with the idea and see it in here and then your thinking leads to your you talking and leads to action yeah yeah do you find yourself when you have an idea that you got to get in and to do some research into it or do you just sit and write yeah. uh both it all depends okay. what it is and what the subject yeah. is yeah yeah interesting yeah. Yeah. I love research. I can get my problem is I can get lost in research because then the nerd comes out in me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. So have you? Because <laughs> he went from different forms and then he went into TV and yeah. Is there something that drew you to TV? Was it something that you had a passion for? Did is there things that you've drawn from to bring you to that point, or is there some you would like to go like? Some people get into one thing, but they really wanted to be in musicals. Or I'm just throwing oh. that out. But what was the path that were getting you to TV? Or is is that a path that you always had there in you or something at some point? First of all, it's funny you say musicals because I can naturally dance, but I cannot sing for for anything. And if I had a voice, I would have definitely gone to Broadway and gone into musicals, or I would have wanted to be like a pop or a rock star, <laughs> but I can't sing. So anyways, um, uh, I started in theater in Toronto, and I wanted to be in TV and film, and I wanted to be in L.A., and my dream was always, as a kid, to be an actor and to There's be in L.A. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, but I really wanted to be in film, but TV came, and then it's funny be, uh, and and sitcoms came and um uh but it's it, it takes a while to figure out your relationship to the camera mm -hmm. and how to it, it just reads differently yeah. you know what what people the your energy and everything uh, and then now the funny thing is it's like I want to be in TV and then all I was getting was like films so I'm, you know what? I'm open to anything. I don't think I'm really made for stage, even though I started there. Because, okay. even though I, I may have a, a a deep voice or a voice, a face for radio, a voice for radio. Um, I um I I don't my my note always from directors and stage was like I don't talk loud enough, and. I'm, you know, I'm very intimate. And that's what I like about TV and film is you have the microphone, the crew is way over there and you have that micro, that boom mic right over you yeah. and it can, it, it can pick stuff up. So I'm not really uh, made for, made for stage because when I would lift my voice up, I just, to myself, it sounded like I was shouting and I probably wasn't. I was probably being, you know, right, right. for, for that, that space and reaching the, the last row. I've got I've got another question about it then. <clears throat> Being a writer for film or for for TV, when you write, do you have to write in the consideration of the creation of it, the angles oh. of the cameras? Because you have to write a story, but then at the same time, are you yeah. considering how that's going to come across in the yeah. show or film yeah. or <clears throat> that you have to write to? Here's the reason why I bring this up. I started having this concept with some of the stuff we've been working on and projects we're working on. And what we were noticing is if I went to the go watch a movie yeah. or even a TV show, there's never an actual angle that's longer than seven seconds. <laughs> right? Yeah. Click, yeah. click, click, yeah. click, 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 right? Yeah. Between three and seven seconds at all times. Yeah. But that's right to that thought process. I mean, <sighs> Yes and no, because that's the director to figure out their shot list and how, okay. they want, how, how they want to shoot it. So that's not up to you. But you're almost giving them, the, you are, not almost, you're giving them the blueprint, right. like uh, the way an uh, architect and a contractor and interior designer, you know, take part in building a house. You're giving them the blueprint of the story. Yeah. And if there's things that are import, really important, yeah, that's there's... Where it's going. There's some way to insert them in the action between the dialogue or even in the dialogue that the character says something and it's like you can't just ignore it and hide it. Like they're, they're, they're mentioning that cup of coffee over there, you know, 
that that might i'm just being arbitrary Absolutely. but um but you do uh have to think about like a first time writer is their script is going to get tossed to so to the side if they're doing lord of the rings and they're a first time writer they the producer is just reading the script and seeing dollar signs and dollar signs or, 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 or don't write something on another planet with spaceships and Star Wars because the producer is just going to look at it and, to and toss it yeah. aside. So you do have to think, and I had a producer looking at this TV series that I was just telling you about. That's about these three couples, these six people. But um, I wanted these, these musical fantasy sequences and people, I've, I've heard people like them and don't, and they're not integral to the series. But a producer read the script and she said, all I was seeing was ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. I, I, I have a musical, I have a musical, I have a musical <laughs> number, I have a musical number, <laughs> and all the people that are in it. So I said, this is, that is good for me, a writer, to hear. Yeah, nice. Man, this has been great. We can only go so long. Yes. But I have so oh. much, and I, 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 you know, for our guests that are watching and stuff, this has been great, and I hope that we can talk on the side because I there's a lot that I want to send to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My thought processes, and then also what I'm learning for you. you know, I just am enjoying this a lot. This yeah, really thank great. you. Yeah. No, to you know, please. I'm I'm still working my my way up or in. I'm I'm definitely not established a writer. I've got some good right. credits as a, as an actor. I know people, but you know, even they have to be careful of who they like listen to and and stuff. And um, but it sounds like you got something. And um, please, if you want to FaceTime or send stuff stuff through email, let's continue the conversation. We gotta want to add something in here because you, we came on the show. You're definitely promoting something and, and you so we want to make sure that you let people know one why would they reach out to you and two how do they get a hold of you oh you guys are awesome so i have a podcast i launched in august it's called frankly kev and uh the series that i'm focused on this this year i'm um, just up to episode 15 is called everyday heroes and it's about people who have been through a lot in their life uh, lives it could be um uh, uh, sexual assault, it could be cancer, it could be stroke, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, someone who I just posted today survived one of the UK's worst train disasters in history. Oh, wow. And um, so it's people who have survived a lot of challenges or even one single challenge and what they did to get through it and how the, they're not just the survivor but maybe thriving. And so these are inspiring stories and it's nice. the amazing thing is actually people think well that's a downer no the amazing thing is how much we laugh during these podcasts because they're they're through it right. they, you know they've they've got some time and distance and uh so i have a website called frankly kev.com but the podcast lives as as you guys know it's like all over it's on apple nice. podcasts it's on google it's on anchor it's on spotify you, you just have to google frankly kev and a, a bunch of stuff will come up the, the, i want to mention the thing that that i do uh, when i was researching how to, how to go about this is one thing that i that i do is i give my guest a guest page this is me i'm not judging anybody else yeah but th this this is how i honor the guests and i get their picture and I get their bio, and I get their links, and I create a page just for them. And I also create a, a little promo. If they want to share, you know, the link to the website, great. And if they want to share, like, the little, pr you know, 30-second clip of them talking, I do that as well. Yeah. And uh, they can get a hold of me through my website or also just my email is kev at franklykev.com. Awesome. Definitely. Yeah. That's awesome. So, hey, everybody, thank you so much for joining Definitely. us. Definitely. Thank you. And um, what up? What up? Hey. What up? Wow. Uh, Rob and Chris, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for having me on your show. You're, You're so much fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I hey, want folks, to come back. Today and a better <laughs> tomorrow. And I hope we do get to see you back. Absolutely. I can't wait. That'd be great. Thank All you. Right, me up? too. What up? Bye.